Okay, this is Real to Fight Club episode 80. Wow. Dang. Welcome to another episode of Realtor Fight Club. I'm so glad you're here. And what's up, Jen Merlin? Hello, Monica. How are you? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Oh, no. This is now, let me, you never ask people how they are because I feel like we're going to hear it now. Yeah, not if you don't really want to know. <laughs> I'm hangry today. I'm Aww. super hangry. And that's a real freaking thing. I started um, experimenting with intermittent, intermittent fasting. Oh, just this week mm. and uh, the time we're recording this it's Wednesday and I'm already hangry. Have you ever seen that? There was an Instagram thing calling this girl. She was pissed. They called her the CEO of hangry. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was like screaming at her friends. <laughs> well, I'll make you this promise. I will not scream at you, but I may be extra irritable today. Oh, good. Finally, yeah, the is, tables have turned. It's usually right. me that's irritable. I'm Zen Jen today. So great. Congratulations. Zen Jen. I like it. But I ate. And I'm hangry, Monica. All right, good. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're so glad you're here for another episode of Realtor Fight Club. And today, Jen and I are going to duke it out over this question. The buyer wants to see a house that doesn't meet their needs. What do you do? What do you do when the buyer wants I want to, to answer you for, I want to answer for you. <laughs> Why? Go ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't talk like that. Stop. <laughs> Not today. Well, well, what you do is you give them a big old hug. <laughs> then you take them there. You cancel all of your plans with your family and rearrange your entire schedule and take them there. No, no I don't know. So what are you going to say? True. Yes, I say take them there, but not rearrange your whole schedule. Oh, God. Oh. Why do you take them? All right, go. Tell us why you wouldn't. No, you tell me first, Fine. Hangry Fine. CEO. Listen, <laughs> what I'm about to say, I know you are going to agree with. I know you've experienced this. Okay, let me hear it. Now, although you don't do a ton of buyers, so for somebody that's been Thank in the business God. 18 years, been doing buyers, I would say a good 40% of buyers end up buying a house that was not matching the criteria we set out with, period. Okay. End of discussion. Okay, I get that. But I don't think that's what we're talking about here. I think I took it a different way when you asked the question. All right, how did you take it? So it's more like, okay, so let's say you've done, we're just going to 100% assume that you did a buyer consultation. Of course, everybody 100% assume. Yeah. And we're also going to know that 100% of the time you got the pre-qualification letter. Mm -hmm. So let's say the qualification letter says they're approved up to 250. They send you a house at 275. Well, that's different. That's a house they didn't qualify for. What we're talking about here is a house that doesn't meet their needs. Okay. So they so said they needed a four bedroom and this is a three bedroom. Why did they need the four bedroom? Well, of course, we've probably ironed that out. And if I can assume that maybe a finished basement would substitute for it, we're going to go see it. Well, okay. So this is different. So this is like, we're, we've done the pre-qualification question. They always, I agree with you. People will say what they think they want without, yeah. of course, because we learn, right. And I always tell them that we're going to learn as mm -hmm. we go. If you don't, if you don't put an offer on this house, because you don't like it, we have to learn something mm -hmm. like we can't just be like, eh, I don't like it. Why? Why don't you like it? And let's talk through it. Well, I don't like the paint colors. Okay. Well, what if the paint colors were painted differently? Well, then I would like it. Okay. Then let's put an offer in. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you've got to walk them down the path. Man, I am hangry. I'm you hungry. are hangry. Did you eat today? Cause I I'm ate. Actually, I'm imagining that I've hired you to help me buy a house and you start saying, why? <laughs> why does well, I don't do that. I mean, maybe I do. I know you this. don't. I'm not sure I do. Right. Anyway, this is why Alan does it. Okay. So that's right. I think like, but people hire me because they want, they want straight talk. You know For what sure. I mean? Like For they sure. don't, they're no BS type people. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm like, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Like 
you can't just not buy a house because you don't like the paint color. Like we can get it painted. So let's like walk down the path of it. So if we're talking and they want, they need a four bedroom house and they have valid reasons for needing a four bedroom house at that time, we're going to understand based on their budget and the location that they want, that it's possible that it's going to be more three bedroom homes. So then it's like, okay, under what circumstances could a three bedroom work? Right. And you're going to have already done that. Um, I took your question as like, that you've, you, because you're a great agent. I mean, you definitely are. Well, right. I'm and talking to our audience. Is too. Yes. yes. You listening are a great agent and you have been like done this. What if scenarios, like talked all around it, just tried to help them understand what it is that they really, really want. And then they send you this crazy damn house and you're like, what the hell? Like, what is this? We are so, not going. But according to your answer, yes, you're saying no, we're not. We're not this. going. Listen, I'm going to be like, <laughs> it's so rude for me to be like, listen, Monica. People. <laughs> well, no, like what, what we're doing is like, I want to go back to them and be like, help me. I hate it when people say help me understand. And I say it all the time because it's so condescending. Maybe it's because I can't say it without being condescending. <laughs> yeah, <it's> exactly. like, <laughs> just tell me what your thought process here. And like, I'll listen. Right. And it's like, tell me what your thought process is. And if they explain it, I can be like, okay, that makes, I can see why you thought that. And these rooms are also nine by nine Mm -hmm. is not going to work for you. It's just like that house we saw the other day at wherever, where you said the room sizes don't work. Like we've had to do that, you know, something like that. Like we've had to do this before. It's like, They love the house, but they, we already know, we already know that they need at least a 10 by 12. Like Mm -hmm. we already know that I'm not showing you a house with nine by nine rooms. We're not doing it. It's too small. Well, uh, my spouse and I have talked and I think in exchange for what this house gives us in the way of a yard, we could live with the smaller rooms. I mean, I would challenge them. I would push you know, I'm not getting in my car I know without you're not. knowing that we're signing a contract. I mean, I'm going to push hard on that because you can't just keep like going around changing your mind. We need some valid logical reasons for this to happen. I just think sometimes it takes that house, for instance, let's say you appease them, you go and you know, it's not going to work because there was this one thing that they were absolutely set on. It takes that to say, okay, can we now agree that we really have to stick back to the plan because we know these things are not going to work. And they're going to say yes until another one comes up tomorrow. That's got the (laughs) same damn thing. And then what do you do? Do you go again? So what if somebody has initially said they want a little space, they want, you know, they don't want neighbors up on them. And then they call you to see this house in like a condo, a city or a condo. Yeah. I'm going to be like, what changed? Help and, me. And then they tell you, well, and it makes sound logical sense. Then you're going. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's not our, jo- uh, our job to predetermine the outcome of a showing. No, but it is our job to help them. So most agents, many people, what I like to call them pop tart agents, not even the ones with the frosting, just regular <laughs> old pop tarts. I actually like better. Is that weird? I don't like the frosting. You're so weird. I like the ones without. You do not like marshmallows either. Do you not like chocolate? Like what else do you not like? Oh, I love chocolate. (laughs) I I got issues with chocolate. (laughs) Yeah, don't even get me going. I'm hungry. You're hungry. (laughs) Anyway, I think that it's, I just, I don't know. I'm so extreme because I see like so many people like just going. I would rather like, let's have a conversation and so many agents um, that I've coached and trained and mentored, they don't want to push the client because they, or the potential client, because they feel then that the client will be like, well, you're not, um, you're not like, I don't want to work with you. Fine. Mm -hmm. Like, fine. I mean, we're, if we're not a fit, we're not a fit, but here's what I do know. If you show the client more than 10 houses, then they feel like you're not hearing them and you're not listening. Even if they're not actually telling you what they want, it is your job to figure out what the unsaid is. Oh, quote quote that shit right there damn confucius says says, (laughs) it is your job to what did you how did you put it is your job to figure out the unsaid because it's exactly what it's exactly what you said at first that they don't always know Mm -hmm. what they want but that's why you have to push you are the expert if you don't push and ask questions 
you're not, what are you doing? You're just opening doors. Like Mm -hmm. anybody can open a door. You are a damn buyer's agent. And that means that you are the professional and you need to consult them as such. Agreed. (laughs) Well, sometimes, sometimes, Sometimes. but I'm also not going to make decisions for them. Um, I'm going to uh, listen. I will ask like, oh, that's, that's, that's that's outside of a circle right there. Okay. And then hear them out and assuming it's not some obviously extremely off the wall, like, yes, you're only qualified up to 250 and this is 300. That's of course a very different story to me. That's qualification. Let's use your example. So they say we only want, we had figured out previously that really the room size of 10 by 12 works. And now this is smaller rooms, but it has a better yard. And that's their reasoning. They said, well, for the yard, we can have smaller rooms. We have smaller rooms and it has an extra room. So the kids can each have their own and smaller is fine. Okay. Let's go. Let's go check it out. Okay. And then it doesn't work. Maybe, maybe they buy it. Maybe they buy it. Now, for instance, I had a new buyer come around uh, recently. I'd been only talking with them on Zoom. We did the buyer consultation on Zoom. Uh, They finally got their financing approved and squared away and figured out what they wanted to do. And so we were ready to see a few houses. They sent me uh, three houses. One was a FISBO that, of course, I set the expectation and trained them that they give me the FISBO name and number so that I can show them. And they did. And uh, these other two. And the one I knew based on some stuff they said that would be um, not in the right location for them. They wouldn't have wanted to be on this up and coming street. (laughs) They Mm -hmm. want to be on a street that's already kind of established. Mm -hmm. Um, However, first time out (laughs) needed to, what's that? Already up and came. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, First time out, wanted to connect with them like wanted to spend more than just one house. Like I thought I could learn a lot by seeing these three houses. They could learn what they don't want. And we were really clear. Like once they saw that one, they're like, we don't like this street. Okay. Then we're going to want to stay West of blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, if, if, you know, if this is the delineation, why don't you drive around and give me some more parameters just so that you'll know when they come up. But that was a very useful, that took me uh, one hour to go through those three houses because they were small. They were down in Newport. Yeah. Um, amazing hour to spend with them and connect. I agree. And that can definitely happen. I think people have to be smart enough to like decide that and figure that out and like whatever works for them and the client, like for sure. That yeah. makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, cause you can find out a lot about people from that, especially By being with them people. and listening to them. Yes. Oh, yeah. I know what was classic. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Um, I said, as we walked in, I said, So have we um, re-evaluated our um, neighborhood options? It looks like we're focused on in the city. Yeah. And at the exact same time, she said yes, he said no. Oh. (laughs) Literally. So what happened? Well, just having that discussion with, I said, oh my gosh, I wish I had that on film. That is (laughs) the most classic and happens all the time. And they're laughing and we're laughing, but it fostered this great conversation of, okay, well, what are you thinking about when you say that? And what are you thinking about? And they got to get on the same page there. And I'm not sure that would have happened if we weren't out in the field. Yeah. I think that I, yeah, I agree. That makes sense. Okay. I think we should go back to our corner. I need to. I'm, I need I'm to. I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> you're not allowed to eat yet. I'm going to eat something <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> you're going to find some crumbs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's head back to our, our corners and we'll hear a word from our sponsor. When we, when we come back, we will have the final punches. Welcome back. Now, before we ring the bell for the final round, Jen, did you take it to the streets or do we have a tiebreaker? Like, what do we have going on here? <laughs> we do have a tiebreaker after, oh. for sure. Yeah, oh. so stay tuned. Is there a hint, hint, anybody? No, there's not. Oh. <laughs> I mean, but if it's like 80% of the others, then. It's not. Winner, winner, Monica, oh. dinner. <laughs> oh, see, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make your, tell me your one minute or less summary as to why we shouldn't show a house to a buyer when we know it doesn't meet their needs or we think. Well, I really think my big takeaway here is what I'd like people to take away from this is it depends, right? Like you made some really valid points. I think I made some valid points. Mm -hmm. I think 
what I want people to take away is make sure you ask questions and it's okay to push and for clarity. It makes sense. It's okay. You are the professional. Agreed. Agreed. I think like picture a, uh, a, um, like a line and on one side is Jen's extreme. Now I'm not showing you that house. You, you know, that's not right for you. And on the other end is my extreme. Yeah. I'll show you any house you want to see anytime, any place. Uh-huh. Like those two things don't work. Those right. two things don't work. The answer is somewhere in the middle with a little common sense and some questions mixed in. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, for sure. But it's okay to push. So like questions you can ask are like ones that we talked about on just that we talked about, like, yeah. tell me more about that. What do you, what's your thought process behind that? Like, and if they've given, if you've done enough work, you can, and you know, like really important to them was a yard for their doodle their giant doodle, you know, right. then it's like, okay, if we go to a condo, where are you taking this doodle? What's happening with the doodle? Because you were very clear that you never put that thing on a leash. And if you're in a condo, it's going on a leash. That's right. So like, what do you want to do here, boo? Right. You know? <laughs> right. And you only know these things when you've done a great job in the buyer consultation and asked the questions, not just be the order taker. Oh, right. three bedrooms, yes. two baths. Let's right. go do it. It's right. why is three bedrooms important to you? Two baths. Is it one and a half or do you need, you know, like mm-hmm. we've got to dig, we've got to fold back, pull back underneath those obvious answers. Exactly. Like dig a little deeper. Mm-hmm. And we do have some resources in, um, we now have the vault. I think you're aware mm-hmm. it, uh, Jennifer Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> If you're what? watching this video, something just <laughs> happened to Jen's face it green or something. I know. I'm like, now I'm angry. <laughs> um, JenniferMertland.com slash vault. We have some resources in there for different questions you can ask. Uh, what a buyer consultation, like what's what you can have in your folder or whatever to be presenting like that. Yeah. So love there. it. All right. I think that's going to have to be the end of today's battle. Do you think there was a knockout? Do you feel strongly about this topic? Do you have experience with this and which way do you fall? Go to our, which way do you want to fall? Which way do you want to fall? Right. You're in charge. Go to realtor fight club podcast, Facebook page and let us know. Do it. And of course, if you have questions about EXP or are curious to know why everybody's coming over, feel free to call or text me 513-400-1691. Thanks, Monica. See you next time, Jen. Bye. Bye.